The Permian-Triassic extinction occurred 250 million years ago and is believed to be the most significant and profound extinction event since the origin of complex multicellular life. But along with this Armageddon occurred the beginnings of the separation of two landmasses that, before this, had been joined up for well over 300 million years. Those are Australia and Antarctica. They joined up during the formation of Gondwana. But the detachment of these two continents may have had an explosive catalyst. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the relationship between the massive impact crater in Antarctica and the parting of it with Australia. Buried under 800 meters or 2,624 feet of ice lies a magnetic anomaly that has hinted at a possible bolide impact since the early 1960s when the first magnetic images were made available to scientists. In 1976, the hypothesis was detailed in a paper, and the evidence cited included a sizable negative gravity anomaly, coincident with a subglacial topographical depression. The measurements were 243 kilometers or 151 miles across, with a minimum depth of 848 meters or 2,782 feet. These claims were challenged by another scientist in 1979, who was then disproved almost 30 years later in 2010 when a new paper reclassified the Wilkes Land Anomaly from being a possible impact crater to being a probable impact crater, based on the evidence provided by the most recent paper as mentioned earlier. Further investigations have pointed to an impact event including a marked thinning of the crust underlying the topographical depression, with an estimated thinning of between 7 to 10 kilometers or 4.3 to 6.2 miles of crust occurring during the impact. That's pretty crazy to think about. Much of this was melted down into a plasma upon contact and catapulted out in all directions, with much of it being flung out into space, where it would then fall back down to the Earth, becoming superheated during the re-entry of the atmosphere, contributing to even more chaos and destruction in the process as this superheated debris would have sparked significant forest and grass fires planet-wide. This asteroid impact is also linked to the unbelievably long-winded and cataclysmic 2 million year long Siberian Traps flood basalt eruption, as the Siberian Traps are antipodal to the point of impact, meaning they're on the opposite side of the Earth from where this bolide struck. Now this is a contentious issue, antipodes are still in the hypothetical stage, because it's hard to test what would happen on the opposite side of the planet from where a large rock slammed into it without, you know, there being a large rock slamming into it, and us surviving. But most scientists know this is most likely what's going on as the energy from these events needs to go somewhere. And the opposite side of the planet from the spot where it struck isn't out of reach from being affected. If these events can thin the crust by 7 to 10 kilometers in seconds, I can only imagine what occurs after the initial impact regarding the transference of energy. It's been speculated that if this was a crater, then the rock that created it was four to five times wider than the Chicxulub impact event, which took out the dinosaurs. Without a doubt, this type of event would have caused a major planet-wide earthquake, achieving a magnitude beyond anything that Earth's natural tectonic process can reach. So it's definitely possible that this is the impact that set the gears in motion for what is perhaps among the worst volcanic events to occur on our planet, with massive amounts of volatiles being released, affecting the climate of the entire world, and causing negative and potentially fatal impacts to areas near and far from Proto-Siberia. Now speaking of the point of impact, this is the location of Wilkes Land Basin, where Australia was joined to Antarctica when this hypothesized event occurred. Now, researchers speculate that the purported impact and associated crater may have contributed to this separation by weakening the Earth's crust at this location. And this is actually a relatively common theme, I've read about this often, where an impact event is associated with a rifting event. For example, the Chicxulub impact that wiped out the dinosaurs is associated with India's Deccan Traps flood basaltic eruptions, which followed a similar timeline and eruptive journey as the Siberian Traps did some 190 million years before it. So I'm a big proponent of the antipode hypothesis and I find it to be fascinating. Generally, the actual physical causation for the separation of a continent is the upwelling of a mantle plume. And if the crust is thinned, magma will rise. And when magma rises, the lands on either side of it get pushed away from one another at an ever increasing rate. These events also tend to propel tectonic plates forth faster than the average speed they are known to drift at each year 
The tectonic plate that Australia rests on is one of the fastest moving on our planet, and it could owe that to this event, and the associated mantle plume that preceded it. Another interesting thing to note is that this impact event might also be associated with the massive supervolcanic complex that erupted in New South Wales around this point. And this complex in its own right is associated with the Permian-Triassic extinction because of just how intense it was. This bolide and the associated shockwaves propelled forth by its collision may have actually led to the eruption of many of the supervolcanoes that were present there back then. I've already made a video about this fascinating place, and it's a relatively new discovery too. You can find a link to that in the description. When Australia and Antarctica began to split, a rift valley formed. And this disturbed some of the land around the hypothesized crater. But aside from that, if we were to go down there and get a sample of the rock, we'd be able to ascertain whether or not this is a 100% guaranteed impact crater. These, if only we could get to it, scenarios are common, and it does my head in. This is the only thing that's stopped researchers from getting a sample of the Burkle Crater, which lies deep within the Indian Ocean. And as recent events have shown us, the deep ocean isn't exactly hospitable to human life. So until then, we have to rely on geophysical methods to ascertain the likelihood that the Wilkes Land Topographical Depression has an origin directly related to an impact event, along with other techniques like searching for ejecta and such. So what do you guys think? Do you think this is the cause of the split between Australia and Antarctica? Or was it just an inevitable thing bound to happen either way? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching. Have you ever wanted to write for a YouTube channel like this one? Well, now's your chance. I'm beginning to entertain recruiting one person to help with script writing. But I wanted to get feedback from you guys, so I'm announcing it here before releasing a video that's dedicated to what I'm looking for. So what do my awesome subscribers think about this? Let me know in the comments down below. I don't want to Jake Tran it, so I'll still be doing everything the same. Writing my own scripts, narrating, going out into the field, and keeping the feel of the channel as is. But I found I really love releasing regular content, and recruiting one person would help to keep it varied. So let me know what you think. Thanks.